This is an unpublished dry fly called Woody's Mayfly Cripple. It was developed over a number of years by Cecil Woody Woodman. I'm tying it on a number 14 3x long bent shank hook. It's probably about the biggest you want to tie it. I suppose you could go to a 12 but tie it down to as small as you want. And Woody is actually a micro fisherman, so he ties his down on 20s, 22s, 24s, even maybe even smaller. The thread I'm using to begin with is olive that will determine the color of the body. I'm going to bring my thread back up about halfway where I'm going to tie in the tail. Woody is insistent that the tail is made from rusty brown thread. And this happens to be Vivas Ultra 120. He uses that because it's the only ultra brown that he's found that has a shine to it. So I'm taking that thread and folding it in half. And then I'll tie it in by the tips and then I will clip the tail later but I want to make sure that I cover that ultra brown thread well with my olive thread keep it on the top of the hook shank I pull forward on the tail thread a little bit to make sure that as I wrap it it stays on top of the thread and then I'm going to clip out these ends here as much as I can to keep them from showing through the body. So I'll take my thread back up to my tie-in point. Now I have to make sure that my hook is secure in my vise and even so it's possible that I'm going to pull back on it. The body of this fly then is made out of stretch cord and for a 14 hook this 0.8 millimeter cord works. I'm going to just start by stretching the cord to begin with. Try to get it. Now it's obviously stretch cord so it's going to stretch back. This is uh, available in the jewelry making section of hobby stores. For hooks smaller than a 14, use a 0.5 millimeter stretch cord and you gotta tie that in nice and tight because you pull back on it and stretch it while you're tying it in. So oh, this is where I have to make sure that my hook is secure in the vise because otherwise I will pull up on the hook. So as I am wrapping the stretch cord, I am pulling on it and stretching it to make it thin. And it's a interesting little uh, discipline here with this fine wire bent shank hook to keep it from bending too much. Now here's where I want to be careful that I don't wrap down beyond where I have my thread. And I'll explain that in just a second here. I'm going to take my thread back up to the tie-in point and then that will be the color of the body because that olive will show through. And I'm going to put a half hitch up here and I just use a ballpoint pen with a hole big enough to go over the eye of the hook to half hitch. And I'm going to go ahead and put my thread out on a cradle. I'm going to start wrapping by hand until I get past the eye of that hook and I want to pull really tight on that stretch cord, get it stretched as fine as I can get it. 
And then I want to make sure that that first wrap is on the olive thread, that it is not on the hook shank because I don't want a bubble at the back. If I wrap here and I actually get my stretch cord on the bare metal, it will actually look like a bubble at the base of the body. And Woody says that that is not a good way to attract the fish. And then as I am wrapping forward, I'm loosening up on the tension. Uh, I can also then use the rotary function of my vise and touching wrap those forward by loosening up the tension on the stretch cord a little bit, then I get a little bit of a taper in the body. And it's okay to come up onto the hook shank, the bare hook shank in front. Uh, that will help when I tie in the wing to keep the wing from spinning. My cradle out of the way. Wrap over the top of that stretch cord. Get my vise secured again. Wrap under it a couple times. A couple, three. And then when I cut this, I'm going to stretch so I don't want to pull the hook up. So I'm holding the hook down, stretching the cord up. And then when I clip it as close as I can, that will pull itself back down inside. And then I'm going to take my thread back a little ways on the body, oh, about a quarter of the way, I guess. I'm going to put a thorax in back here. And for the thorax, I'm using peacock curl. But I'm going to take a piece of peacock curl and I'm going to bend it in the middle. And Woody says then that what that does is it makes the fibers go both directions. And I'll tie that in. I'm leaving plenty of room in front for the wing. And then I'm just leaving my thread hang right there. And then I can wrap the thorax against the thread that helps keep the two strands together. And it's not a real big thorax. Three, four wraps is plenty. Just a little ball there that the wing is going to rest against. And I'll put three wraps over the top of that and three wraps underneath of it to secure it. And then I'm going to clip out or you can break that off too. The wing is deer. That's half of what's going to help this cripple float. All right, a mayfly cripple is a mayfly that's having trouble coming out of its shuck uh, as it's flying away. So it's sitting on the water crippled uh, and easy prey. So it's going to float with deer. So I have taken a pinch of deer. So I've taken a pinch of deer, put it in my stacker. I'm opening the stacker so that the tips are going to be on the eye side of the hook. Pull those out. Now what I want to do is measure about a shank length. And then I'm going to bring that up to the front of the hook and wrap over that once lightly or twice lightly and then pull down nice and hard on that. Oh, and I broke my thread, which is okay. Since I broke my thread anyway, I'm going to go ahead and change my thread color. 
I'm going to go to some black thread here for the wing and head. Uh, you don't need to change thread color, and I wasn't planning to do that, but breaking my thread reminded me that that's an option. All right, tie that in about a hook shank. Loose wrap, couple loose wraps, and then pull down tight without breaking the thread this time. And then wrap some tight wraps on that. Wrap underneath, help it stand up just a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and clip off the butt ends of the deer just behind the thorax. The other piece that helps this cripple float is dry fly hackle. So I have some grizzly hackle. I have clipped the fibers at the butt of that grizzly so that I have those little barbules, helps tie it in. And then I'm just gonna do a couple of wraps. Do one behind and then another one in front. and tie that off. Bring three wraps over the top. And then some wraps in front. Go ahead and clip out the grizzly. Then I'm just gonna pull back up on that deer and get underneath of it with my thread and the easiest way here now to do a knot is to do half hitches so I'm putting two wraps of my thread around my half hitch tool and pulling that off and then it, I don't have to worry about trying to uh, whip finish underneath of that wing but these are called double half double half hitches and I'm going to put three of those on and then clip those off. And I suppose if I was being a little bit more particular about this being a dry fly, I should have put those, that hackle on with the shiny side towards the hook so that those hackle feathers would have bent forward, but I think it's okay either way. The last thing then is I'm going to clip the tail and uh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch so this then is Woody's Mayfly Cripple.